Tonight we're going to welcome to the show our special guest DJ, DJ Encore. What's up, guys? What's up, buddy? What's up? Thanks Good for having me. Again. Yes. Thanks for coming. Definitely. Man, I'm excited. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Have you been watching our show? Yes. Yeah? You don't look like you come to Red Hook much. Not much. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. funny. My, uh, my fiance, her whole family's from Brooklyn, but uh, okay. I'm not sure of the exact area, but that's the only time I come up well, here. Welcome here, to Red Hook, man. Thank you. We're happy yeah, to have you. You're, you're it's a pleasure Jersey to be here. Guy, right? Yes. Born and raised? Born and raised. What part of Jersey? Uh, I was born in Tom's River. It's South Jersey. South Jersey? So it's nice down yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Good summertime spot. Yeah. The shore? Yeah. Lots of good stuff at the so shore. You must play all over the place down there. I was able to corner the shore for the market. I mean, it's, it's great down there. We have a really good shore time party. You know, it's crazy. You go DJ the shore, and then you come to New York and try to capture the same energy. It's just, it doesn't yeah. happen in New York. Definitely a, a different vibe. You know, <laughs> I like the vibe. It's just totally different. I mean, we're a little bit, I think we may be a little bit behind with the music, and the owners down at the shore don't really understand the, the music shift a lot of the times. Yeah. But um, I had a, an example from when I first started going to the city, I played uh, a room I was really, really excited for. And uh, just uh, planned mentally, I prepared some music and stuff. I was told it was gonna be an open format room. So I planned to go there and just do what I do, be real super open format. Which club was this? It was uh, Highline Ballroom. Okay. So uh, a group that I work with often, uh, E-Rock Entertainment had booked yep. me over there and the guy is awesome, but uh, he told me open format. So I'm like, all right, you know, like open formats. I'm comfortable going in. You know, I had a lot of friends that came with me and we were pumped the whole way up. So I get there and I'm rocking. The whole crowd is moving and VIP, everything. So I, I'm like, I'm doing a great job. Then one of the guys that works there came over to me. He's like, like what the hell are you doing? Why, why are you playing walk this way? Like, <laughs> well, you so can't much. do this. <laughs> yeah. So then like, I got really just like super nervous. I, I see him talking actually, uh, this night was a night that I headlined. So, um, there was no one else going on after me and he was kind of like looking it looked like he was just scrambling for another dj to come on he was he was talking to some of the people that were around me in our group just and for one record for one record played. and, and it that, was just, that and must it, have put you on such a bad head yeah it, it threw me off because now this is i mean i played in the city before this a few times but this was like my first big headlining gig so it definitely put me in a different mind i didn't really know who this guy was but i knew he was important because he was around a lot of the people that i knew that i was booked by this was a saturday night at yeah. highway okay yeah, so the room was packed, the vibe was great, and then once she told me that, it threw my whole mindset off. I, I still kind of did what I did, but I was really cautious on the stuff I picked, so kind of threw the whole vibe that I had going on off. But um, I called the guy when I got, I got out of the club, I'm like, bro, I thought you told me it was open format. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, like hip hop and house. So I was like, ah, oh, like I, I had no idea, and that's when I started learning a lot about. So was that one of your worst experiences ever as a DJ? Oh yeah, it was definitely uh, defeating. What? What was, what was your worst experience as a DJ? Uh, that might have been it. Like, I... Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah. You know, you, you first, like, it was your first gig in, uh, in New York? My first, like, main headlining gig. So you worked yourself up. You must have been practicing all day. Oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe even more than all day. Just prepping myself. Yep. Like, mentally, I mean, and my music was on point. I, I didn't plan any sets, but I just, I was comfortable because that was my realm. Like, open format is what I do. Yeah. So I really was expecting to just do what I always do at the club and be able to take this as my building block to get into the city, which, I mean, I think is a dream of a lot of DJs, and especially mine, you know, to play for different crowds and city crowds. Yeah, it's kind of a, a head kill. I mean, I, I've, I've played many times where, you know, certain influencers in a place might be coming up to you, and even people who know nothing about music, yeah. and they're like coming up, oh, you got to play this, you got to play that. And it really throws off your whole game, yeah. you know, and what you're doing. And immediately now you start second guessing yourself. Am I playing the right song? Am I playing the right track? Just know you're not the only one that's happening. Yeah. I mean, I've come to, to find that out happen often, but I thought I was the only one. And I thought that I was never going to get another shot in the city. And not only did uh, he come up to me with the, the music, he set me up and like uh, everything was supposed to be turntables and a mixer, which I'm used to. So I get there and the CDJs were set up. So I asked the sound guy, I was like, hey, like when the, your opener is done, can you switch it for me? He's like, yeah, no problem. So he puts them on and the right turntable didn't work at oh, all. Oh, man. So now I'm freaking out because I use the right turntable. I don't really use the left one. You know, I use it to, to cut and scratch out of songs, but my right one is the predominant, predominant turntable that I use. Yeah. So that was before I even started and I had to get comfortable using a CDJ, then a turntable. <laughs> and then it was just so like the, the night was off, but I want to try to make the best of it. I didn't let that get me down. But then when he came up to me with the, 
with like the not playing open format style, I, I didn't know what to do. Oh, so that <laughs> night was a disaster from the start. Right from the jump. Yeah. Oh, man. But leading up to it, it was going to be the best night of your life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had all of my friends there. We had that whole, you know, uh, in Highland Ballroom behind the DJ booth. There's oh, a course, huge setup. Yeah. I must have had like 25, 30 of my friends there, you know, and I mean, they had a great time. You know, I don't even remember any of it. Like, they're like, oh, no, you did good. Don't worry about it. And like, who cares what this guy said? But well, um, one thing I could tell you, you're not going to run into any issues here. You have top yeah. of the line stuff here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nobody's going to yeah. tell you what to play. Unless he jinxes it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why I was really excited to do this show. Yeah. And actually, tonight, you get to play on our brand new baseball sound system. So you're the first one to break it in. So I was, I was saying earlier, we tested it out. I have no idea how your neighbors don't come knocking on your door. This they thing come, bumps. They, they knock. Yeah, yeah they, they knock. Bumps. Yeah, we're, we're actually pretty lucky, though, because, you know, next door is a warehouse okay. to our warehouse, and the, on the other side is a bar. Oh, okay. So we do have a tenant upstairs, but uh, he's pretty, on Tuesday <laughs> we, nights. We've done it like 11 o'clock. It's not that yeah, bad. Yeah, okay. he knows. So, so um, tell us how you got into DJing. What, what brought you into the whole DJ game? I was always into music. I, uh, I always wanted to do some, like play the drums or the guitar. And uh, it was me and my mom growing up. So DJ equipment was really expensive and still is. But you know, for us then, you know, anything over a certain amount really wasn't feasible. And I never asked for it because I understood our situation. Yep. So we went to, um, we always just go to like flea markets and stuff like that. I, I just picked up a pair of drumsticks. I think they were like a dollar. And I would literally drum on everything, like car seats and phone books, whatever I could drum on, buckets. And um, my mother knew that I had like an ear for music because I was always on beat and I could rock the songs that were in the car. I was sitting in the backseat and playing a headrest. So um, by doing that, the drum set was still kind of out of our reach. So I was able to save up and I got a guitar. I learned how to play the guitar by myself, um, tablature online, like YouTube videos and stuff like that. And I always wanted DJ equipment, but it was just too expensive. I remember at one time there was a, like a DJ in a box special yeah, and yeah. like two turntables and yep. a mixer. Yep. Like I always used to see the ads for that. And um, I would ask all the time for Christmas, but like I know if, if it didn't come, I wouldn't make a big deal out of it. And then um, I saw an ad in the paper. It was for a, a DJ company. And like I looked into it, I never really wanted to do the, the weddings and private gigs at that time in my life. Yep. And I went there and I had a meeting and I, I told them how excited I was to, to DJ and to learn. And they were like, well, listen, if you work with us, we'll buy your equipment and you could just have your gigs paid off. So I was so excited, I, I signed up right there. I'm like, sign me up, you know what I mean? So they got the equipment. I had to leave at the warehouse, they had a warehouse there, but they gave me the key code to the warehouse. So I was allowed to go there and practice whenever I wanted. So I don't think that they really thought that I was gonna be there what, as much um, as I was. What DJ company was this? It was uh, Elite Entertainment out of yeah. uh, Eatontown, New Jersey. And um, I learned a lot of music I didn't know from them. Cause I mean, they actually had like classes you would go through and. Um, we would do these like musical question games and uh, learn from like the fifties all the way till now. You know, I had a big upbringing with music with my family, but that really hit every genre of music that I didn't know. So that probably helped you in your open format game. Oh yeah. A lot, you know, and with their private parties, I took all the, the experience. I worked with them for like two years. And then once my equipment was paid off, I, uh, you're like, yeah. peace. <laughs> I was like, hey, guys, like, thank you so much for, for bringing me You're up. like, yeah. see ya. And I was out. And um, <laughs> I felt bad. But, I mean, I mean, that was the goal, you know. To, Loyalty. Yeah, yeah. Um, they weren't too happy about it. I mean, they're, I'm sure they're, they were. They're a, they're a great company. I mean, they, um, they're still, like, on top of their game, you know, as far as, you know, that field goes. They're traveling around. I mean, the owner of the company has amazing feats behind it under his belt as far as what he's has accomplished with the company. Um, but yeah, I mean, my head was really into the nightclubs. Yep. And to, to be able to like show what I do for big groups of people. And that didn't happen for a long time though, you know? So I started at like little bars, like local stuff in my town. So there had to be some DJs that you were inspired by. Oh yeah. Um, DJ Clutch is uh, one of my favorite DJs and we actually became good friends you know, through the business. I used to go out and see him at like um, Deco and OLS and Park East mm -hmm. and um, I would watch him and just go home and be so inspired like a lot of the things that really inspired me to be you know into what Clutch was doing was like his wordplay routines and um, how he would choose like his music it was crazy though because whenever I would hear him and he would do something I'd be like oh, it's so dope but I would never want to play his wordplay association or routine 
Because I never knew, like, imagine, like, I'm at a club and I'm rocking and people are loving what I'm doing, but then Clutch is in the corner, I'm like, what the hell are you doing, bro? It's my stuff. We talk yeah. about this all the time. <laughs> so, like, we talk I. talk about it all the time. I went to go see him a lot. I went to go see Riz. He's another one of my favorite DJs, and we became cool. Um, DJ Finesse. Um, really the open format guys like I really respect and, and look up to and all those guys gave me the same love back which to me that was like one of the biggest accomplishments that I've had it's not like really the room I played it's these guys who I looked up to my whole life giving me that respect back on like a personal level which was really cool yeah, it for feels me. good yeah feels really good, good right you know yeah. you feel accepted yeah yeah it's great and like that like private you know like DJ community group yep. you know to get accepted by Clutch and Riz and like Finesse is really everything to a DJ in my field. Sure. You know? That's good. You look up to some of the greatest DJs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, I mean, like, going out and listening to DJs, you don't really get inspired. Like, I haven't been inspired by a DJ in, in a long time. No. So, I mean, it's good that you had the chance to go out and listen to these guys play. I know a lot of that, too. I mean, I had conversations with Clutch and with you. I feel like it's just because of how a lot of these clubs are micromanaged now, where you really can't be as creative. You know, people can't, like, for instance, with Clutch, they can't book DJ Clutch to do what he does because they want a certain thing, you know? I mean, it's, it's cool because, you know, you get to play these great rooms, but the creativity's cut out a little bit yeah. in certain rooms, I feel like. Yeah, I guess it's, uh, I mean, it seems like on every show we're talking about the frustration that DJs have because they can't necessarily play things that could work or well, things that they want to play. 90% of these, like, DJs that you're talking about, they're just bored. They'll get bored in these clubs nowadays. Yeah. You know, they don't get to reach in like they used to and drop like maybe a classic record. They're not reaching like they used to, you know, or not as much as they used to. So it gets, gets yeah. kind of boring to, for like this new style of nightclubs. But it I mean, is what it is though. If you want to keep working, you got to, um, you got to play by the rules. That's what it is. Yeah. But in terms of going out there and playing, I'm assuming that, you know, you're still excited to go out to some, you know, to these clubs and play, even if you can't always play maybe the certain records that you would like to play. I'm sure you're still inspired to go and play. Yeah, definitely. You know? I mean, for me, I have spots like I'm resident at locally. A friend of mine I grew up with, he opened up a bar since Seaside Heights. It's called uh, JR's Bar. And when he first started it, he's a little bar in a town that has a lot of big clubs. Clubs were really busy at that point, and then it turned out where his little bar was busier than any other club, and he's really the only one doing business now in town. And it's because he had a great staff from the start. He had good bartenders. Um, he let me, since we started, we butt heads a lot. I mean, I was a hip-hop DJ for a really long time, and that's all I played, and he just didn't want it at the time. So we would kind of, we would argue about that a little bit, but it got to the point where he trusted me enough to just give me the full reign and bring in DJs, especially guys with talent, like the DJ clutches and you know people who were able to still stay creative along with playing the hits but over there we get away with doing more stuff like that that's why I really enjoy that party I mean it's it's a hole in the wall bar but it's the busiest bar in town but that's your bar and I love it and you I know? we created it from ground up you know as far as the vibe in there and it's year round I mean it's not like a summer thing anymore like it used to be hold on to that bro yeah, yeah for as long as possible yeah it's 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 the truth you know he makes a good point because um I think today it's not so much about, uh, I think, you know, DJs who are all about the craft of playing music and playing for crowds that appreciate it, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter if you're playing in a place that has 150 people in it or, you know, a place that has a big stadium these days. I think it's just playing for a crowd that's appreciating the music. It's and the response. It's the, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all you're playing for that response. I call it like the O factor. Yep. Yeah. You, you know, want to you drop the words out and you want people to be singing the lyrics. You yeah. know? That's, that's, that's what you play for. Yep. You know? Yeah. I mean, I have nothing against, like, the big festivals, but, um, you know, I mean, everybody comes and everybody's just facing the DJ and everybody's yeah. just staring at the On DJ, you know? Oh, and then, like, or and, then, like the, and it's, like, really easy because, you know, they're going to play the hits and they're going to play that one song and everybody's just going to jump up and down. Yeah. Um, but, like, when you're in an intimate setting like that bar, nobody's, like, staring at the DJ everybody's like dancing and they're actually enjoying themselves there yes. and there's zero bottle service at this place so it's like you're only going to come there if you want a party and i mean the drinks are cheap like i said i mean they're in plastic cups i mean it's just a different vibe but the clientele is nice it's good it's not a bad crowd it's it's a fun crowd it's normally a, a younger <laughs> crowd of people but they do get it like when i'm doing certain things in wordplay it's like we had a 
couple of my friends from, uh, there's a group in the city that I associate with, a lot of really good DJs on. It's called the uh, Official Music Group. Okay. So in the summertime, we bring down some of their guys. And um, like DJ DC, he's actually from Jersey also. And he gets it. Like He's one of my protégés. Like, he kind of came up with me and um, would come out and ask a million questions about stuff, learn, like watch me play certain records, would be curious on why I would play a rock record in the middle of the club. But then when he saw the crowd's reaction, he would, he would get it. So when he comes down, I mean, he plays that room perfect. We had uh, another DJ from that group, Nick Russo, same thing. He's from the city, and um, his wordplay stuff is, is awesome too, and he does different stuff that a lot of other DJs won't do. You know, DJ Shinari is a uh, DJ from Japan, and I was a little nervous about having him, but he totally killed it. And I mean, that's the talent we put at that place. It's like we're getting these talented DJs that should be playing the biggest rooms in Seaside, but they're playing this little bar, and I feel like that has a lot to do with the success of this place being so busy. How long have you been doing this place? For a long time, I would think he had that bar for maybe seven years. So, yeah, since since the day he took over so the seven piece. year re residency is like unheard of these yeah. days. I started doing the weekends, and then we wanted to do something different, so we were like, let's do Tuesday. You know why not? And we started with zero people, and now it's it's to what it is. And now I just book the weekends there for them with with good DJs. I give them suggestions and. You know, all around the board. He's, so he's you have a busy. party that's been going on since 2009. Yeah. It's great. It's a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you, do you like, um, consider that like one of your highlights of your career? Like having this residency and building a night into what it is today? I think so. It really helped me build as a DJ too because like a lot of the guys that I talk to now, their long set is like two and a half hours. But at the time, we start at 10 and we would go to four in the morning. So I would play, I would get there early and I would play all night long and I wouldn't repeat a song. So that's kind of another reason why that private party company I was telling you about helped me. Sure. Because I was able to incorporate these like left field songs with all the hits because I had so much time. So instead of burning through tracks, like trying to get my hour set done, I could really like build a party. And you can actually break records, which a lot of places you can't break records. Yeah. You know, because if you have consistent people that are coming, um, every week you know you can throw that record on at a certain time and then the people come in every week they'll be like oh what's that record he plays every week and you yeah. have that opportunity to do that where in a lot of these mainstream places say in manhattan you can't do that you know because if you play something that they have no idea about they look at it, you funny then yeah. you've got to play a a hit to bring them all back again yeah yeah so, so you had something dramatic happen to you 2010 it was? 12. 2012. Would you tell us what happened? I was in a really bad car accident. I was actually uh, coming home from the club one night and I was hit by a drunk driver. And uh, we were actually, we went there for work. I ended up um, getting the job. But um, when the car hit us, it put me um, unconscious. And uh, there was three of us in the car. My friend, uh, the driver of the car, he was in a coma for about three weeks and the other guy was, was really beat up along with myself. We all woke up in the, the trauma center. So um, I was off my feet for months. I couldn't do anything. I mean, I was really nervous because I live on my own. You know, I, I grew up with my mother, like I was telling you guys. It was just my, myself and my mom, so we really didn't have a big income to cover me because I was renting a house at the time. And um, luckily, uh, I have really good friends. Like, my friends are like my family. They all pooled together and threw a couple benefits for us, and with that money, I was able to heal the proper way, but it was, I, I always say it was like the worst, best thing that's ever happened to me. Because um, when I was able to walk again, I looked at things like way differently. Because I have nothing against people partying, drinking, have a good time, but I feel like I might have, because I worked seven nights a week, so for me to drink seven nights a week kind of clouded my judgment and, you know, when I wake up sometimes I had no idea what I did the day before. But with this, I mean, I was on so much different medicine. I had to go back and forth to the doctors and emergency rooms for surgeries, back surgeries. And I mean, I had to get plastic surgery on my face. Um, a lot of stuff had happened. So with that, when I started the DJ again, I looked at it way differently. I looked at it more of a business than like the party. Yep. And I wanted to take this like, chance as my time to like make it. Like I, I had a bunch of different jobs growing up. And I mean, I was a UPS driver worked at a pharmacy, I counted pills, you know, like bartender, uh, waiter. And I knew that every time I stopped those jobs and went back to a nightclub and DJed, like that was my happiest moments. 
And I mean, plus the money was great. You know, like I work all week in one job and one night DJing and it would be the same thing. So I had to make a decision. So either I'm going to give DJing 110% or I'm just going to stop and do something else now and go to college, whatever, get a degree. But that's just not me. Like my heart is in DJing. So I put everything that I had into DJing. And from that point on, I was able to buy a house all from DJing, a nice car. Um, I have a beautiful fiance has got engaged. So Congrats. I'm, thank you. I'm confident that I could take care of her. And um, like the, the motivation I have is, I don't know if I would have had it if I didn't get to the car accident. I don't want to say that because you never know. But if I didn't get into that car accident, I really don't think I would be where I'm at. I mean, luckily now I'm able to travel. I mean, I just got back from Vegas, which was awesome. That was a big uh, accomplishment for me. Where'd you play out there? I did a LAX, nice. which I'm um, super nervous because I mean, I was DJ AM's club. Yep. And um, <clears throat> that party, it was like the same thing as JR's though. They just wanted me to go in there and play to the crowd. So I straight up asked them, like, now I'm, you know, I know what to do. So I was like, can so, I play walk? Can, yeah, can I, can I go like a little left if I want to? And the guy's like, listen, if the crowd is happy, you can do whatever you want. So I had so much fun out there. The guy's, um, their open, uh, opening DJ, his name is uh, Absent Minded. Mm -hmm. It's a really good kid. And um, he saw my talent when he was in Jersey because he was out here. And he's like, yo, I was like, I'd love to maybe do some stuff with you and link up. So he put me um, in the hands of Andrew, who's the manager of LAX. And I think they were a little nervous to have me out there being, you know, from New Jersey, New York area, yep. you know, when they have so much talent in Vegas already. So to take the chance to fly me out was a big deal. The first time I went out there, um, I played it safe, but I played the room properly. And then um, I was more comfortable this time. I just went out and it was a really good night. It was Halloween weekend, so it was packed out. You must have been so pumped. I had a, the high of my life. It was one of the biggest highs like I had in a long time. You're flying out to Vegas, you're yeah. playing in LAX. Yeah. And that was my dream, yeah. to, to travel. Like I, I have New Jersey pretty much under my belt. I played everywhere I wanted to play in New Jersey. I have a residency with a couple of really good places. Um, Mr. East is one of them. I mean, they're awesome people. They, uh, if you're a Jersey DJ, those are the guys that you kind of want to be with eventually. That's what everybody says, yep. yeah. Yeah, they, they're, they're so smart. For a long time. They yeah. put their faith in me. They heard me a couple of times, and actually we were talking about Clutch earlier. He was in their ear for a while, like, you got to hear this guy. You know, he really gets it. He could play the room right. So they gave me a couple of chances here and there. I went and did my I thing. I swear Clutch is a silent investor in all those clubs. <laughs> oh, yeah. He has stock, <laughs> definitely. I mean, he, uh, I feel like he, he's the face of like Deco and Bis yeah. for all those clubs that they owned back in the yeah. day and, and to this day. He's an OG. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they, they put me on once a month over there. Then they made me their brunch resident for Gotham, which is a new uh, business they opened in Red Bank, New yep. Jersey. Yep. And that place is doing great. So, I mean, with them, you know, behind my back, and then uh, E Rock that has my back, Jersey for me, I feel like I've accomplished. So now, like, I got into the city a little bit. I work with uh, a DJ, DJ Ammo, who um, has been really, really helpful for me. He's a newer DJ, but he gets it, and he's super humble. You know, a great guy to work with and a good friend. I mean, I, I was explaining to him a situation earlier, but I had him down by the shore. And he was just so humble and his... Uh, it's a good dude. Adam. Yeah, he really is. So, I mean, I have good people that I work with. They may not, may not be the top people on the list, but I'd rather stay with guys like him who are really loyal and will put me where they can, you know, and doesn't expect anything. Yep. You know, and his partner, Sean, um, they do a lot of good spots. So I'm happy with where I'm at now in, in the city and, you know, traveling to Vegas. I might have um, Japan coming soon with that group I was telling you with earlier. So... There's a lot of big things that are on the list to try to accomplish That's for good, this year. Bro. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just goes to show you, like you said, where you just, you know, you, you gave up everything else and you just focus and concentrate on one thing. And, it's, and it really is the truth, though. If yeah. you put 110% into one lane, then you're going to achieve it. You know, and I mean, yeah. we've had that, you know, even, you know, Shortcuts was talking about that when he was talking about how he was running his barbershop and he was doing the DJ and then he's doing like 50 miles an hour in two lanes and he just pieced out his business and focused one th one, one on one lane, which was the DJing and he's doing phenomenal too. So it just yeah. goes to show you that you put in your time and energy and you focus on that one thing and that's how you make it. You know? I agree. Absolutely. Because so, before it was, it was sloppy. You know, I was getting bookings, but it wasn't really the ones I wanted to take. I just took them because I knew I needed to. You know, now I, c I can pick and choose a little bit more where... Which is very important. Yeah. And you could focus on your craft. You know, yeah. like you have to, like, you know, having that residency in that bar, 
makes you a very strong DJ because you're playing consistently. Like when you were consistently playing from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the morning, that's six hours a night. Years. You're playing for, for years. years. Yeah. So that's how you're building up your chops. Yeah, and, and you to go in to do a two hour set after doing six hour sets is nothing. You go to Vegas and you rock for two hours and you actually want to DJ more. That was the thing with me. Like when I finally started headlining these, these bigger rooms, I almost was thrown off when I got put on because I mean, I like to play everything. So I feel like as a, a headliner at this point, you really just have to play the hits. So I didn't really get it at some points. Like I would want to play other records, but I know I was hired to play the hits. So I mean, like yeah, you're hiring DJ Encore to come and play the hits, which is great. I mean, I'm working, so I'm happy. But then again, like it's not really what I could do. You know, like that's why I was so excited when I, I found this because the guys could come in here and really be creative. And 9% of the stuff I'm gonna play here, I, I wouldn't really be able to play in the club. Right. You know, there's, which there's is no love, there's no judge here. Yeah, I love that. You know what I'm saying? And it's yeah. just like be creative, show the other side of who you are as a DJ and not what you always have to be sometimes. Yeah. You so know? did you actually make something for us? Like did you sit down and go through a bunch of records and make a playlist for us? I thought about it for a while, like how I was gonna approach it. And I wanted to be me, but also creative. So what I did was I put, a, put together some like uh, wordplay routines. I call them like my bedroom routines that I've done that I always wanted to play out, but I just can't. So I have maybe a few of those assembled and in between I'm gonna freestyle some stuff okay. and play some songs that I really like, you know, in between the, the creative stuff. But that was, to me, that's what DJing's all about. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I like the DJs I like. And um, the one thing I spoke to you earlier about it that might hurt me a little bit is I don't go out and network as much as I should. But um, I also don't want to hear too many other DJs because, like I said, if I do hear something, it jades me from playing that. So all the stuff that I play, any wordplay association stuff, is stuff that I thought of. It's not me taking it from anybody. Yeah. And I'm sure other DJs are going to play it and maybe have played it before me. But like the... I feel like the respect of a DJ is you do it yourself. You come up with your own ideas. You want to be honest to yourself. Yeah, because so. I know if I'm playing somebody else's stuff. And I've, and I've done it here and there. You know, it's like on a Tuesday party, sometimes I'm like, like, let me see if I can do this. And I'll drop it, you know, and it's dope and it works. But I would never, I would never disrespect any of the other DJs that thought of it themselves to put that work in. Because that's, you know, that was the art of it. Sure. You know. Sure. But... Don't ever hold out either. You know, like if, if you're in a club and you don't want to do a certain mix, you just do it. If they're going to bite, they're going to bite anyway. Yeah, well, no. In the clubs, even here, like, I'm not going to really do the, the more mainstream ones that I have, just some older ones that I've come up with. But in the club, I, I go all in. Yep. Yeah, you know, because yeah. there's so much new music coming out that I have to play, so I try to make it creative. Sure, sure. So. Well, we're looking forward to hearing you, bro. Thanks well, thank for coming you. down. And thanks again for having me. Yep. DJ Encore. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for coming to Red Hook. Break. We're going to get Encore up on the turntables. Peace.